Come for the bread, stay for the politics. I'm Ben Walsh, and this is Let Them Eat Bread. Today on Let Them Eat Bread, we are making the same recipe we made last week, which is uh, James Beard's Beard on Bread French-style loaf. Okay, so the reason we're making this again is for a couple reasons. The first of which is it didn't really turn out the way it should have. Um, if I was to keep track of these, I think this one and the Claire one are probably the big ones that I really screwed up. So maybe we'll have like a series later called like Ben Blew It or... Um, you know, something like that. Anyway, we're making this again uh, because I didn't really do it well. I think it can be improved upon. I didn't really like the size that the two loaves gave us. So we're going to do one big loaf. Uh, and also, I, you know, since I'd never worked with hard flour before, I think that we can we can do better. So we're modifying the recipe a little bit this week. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of extra water. So I have three cups of water here. We're not gonna use all of it, most likely. Um, I just warmed that much up just in case we need a little more, okay? So um, when we put it in, we're gonna start by putting two cups in just as we would normally have done, right? But what we're gonna do instead is we're just gonna have an extra cup of water on hand just in case we need a little bit of extra moisture with this very, very dry type of flour, okay? Other than that, episode will pretty much be the same. We will have an extended politics segment just like last week. And I will be talking a little bit about um, the show because the couple weeks ago, it was Let's Meet Bread's birthday. So I've been doing this for about a year. So if you want to hear about what, you know, what it's been like to do that, make sure you stick around for the politics portion. Um, and anyway, all our ingredients are in front of us and we are ready. So let's get started. Indeed. All right. So first, we're going to take our red bowl like last time and put two cups of water into it, keeping one in reserve just in case. Next up is going to be one tablespoon of white sugar. Just pour it in there nice and slow. Next up is going to be our strange amount of yeast, three and three eighth teaspoon or one and a half packages of active dry yeast. Next up, we're just going to give those a stir and then we're going to let this sit for five minutes. All right. Just let that bloom. No rush there. While our yeast is blooming, what we are going to do is we are going to add our kosher salt. The recipe calls for a tablespoon, but you know how I do with salt, so just put in what you want uh, for salt. Next up, we're going to give this a stirry stir. Just make sure it's all incorporated together before we move on to our next step. And that next step is putting our flour in one cup at a time and then stirring in between each one. You're going to do this five times. Now. I did add, end up adding a tiny bit of water in because it looked dry between cups four and five. You do not have to do this. It turned out actually that the dough was quite moist and, hydr and well hydrated. So if you do end up adding a tiny bit of water, do keep in mind that you're actually going to have to add a lot more flour on the back end as you pour this out. So now what we're doing is we're just flouring our work surface. You, it calls for a light amount of flour. I'm being a little generous with my light amount of flour here just because of the amount of moisture in my dough. And I had to add a ton of flour to this and knead it for almost 20 minutes. So we're just putting that out on the board first of all. All right, so you can see it's very sticky. It's sticking to my hand, it's coming everywhere. It's hard to knead, it's everywhere. So just add as much flour as you need to, make sure that you're incorporating that flour, get the dough to a reasonable state so you can actually knead it. This will take some time because I added a little bit of water and use less flour, all right? So now finally, this is about 12, 13 minutes in from kneading. You have to knead this for a long time. I finally got it into a good consistency. This is not going to pass the window pane test, by the way. The flour just doesn't really work that way. If you want to try and get it that way, use a machine. But we are going to try and make this into a taut ball, and then we're going to use the poke test. It does bounce back, so we are good. Next up, we're oiling our bowl. I'm using olive oil just as kind of a fun thing to have in there. Usually, I'd use regular canola oil. As usual, just use your hands. No real reason to make this any more tool intensive than it has to be. And take your bread, give it a quick toss in the oil just to make sure it is thoroughly coated and loses no moisture during the rising process. Then we are covering with plastic wrap or any other sustainable alternative you have as usual. And last but not least, our tea towel. All right, live Ben, pick it up. All right, so we have made our dough. We have kneaded our bread. It is sitting over there waiting for us to get back to it, which we will do in an hour and a half. 
and we are back look at that rise it's beautiful all right so we're just going to uncover this and get ready to form our bread and we are going to punch that down get all that extra air out that we don't need just do a quick fold get it onto the table you're just going to need it real quick one or two minutes just to incorporate the oil that is in the bowl there into the dough get it nice and ready put it into a top ball and then we are going to look at that there we go we're forming this into one long log this is our uh, going to be our bread. You can do the rolling method that I showed last week, but we're actually just going to, it's going to be much easier because the dough is more hydrated just to do it this way. Next, we're taking three tablespoons of cornmeal and putting them on a large half sheet tray here. This is what is going to make our bread nonstick. We're just putting our dough onto the tray. Sorry that this is off camera, guys. I didn't know my angles were going to be like this. All right, so we're just angling and rearranging the bread on the tray here, just making sure that the bottom is completely covered. Next, we are taking our knife and making four to five slits in our bread uh, in order to get those lovely lines that people like on baguettes. Next, we are combining one one tablespoon of egg white and one tablespoon of cold water and using it to paint our loaf. You want to make sure that every square inch of this loaf is painted. You want to get it in the nooks and the crannies. You want to make sure you get some extra uh, liquid into the slits that you just made. So those slits, by the way, are going to be about half an inch deep into your bread as that way you get the most definition on those. But just, you know, dab your paintbrush into the area where those slits are. That way you will make sure that you get that nice little light crust. It's going to be a very light crust that this liquid adds to it. Uh, but you want to make sure that you get all of those in. And you can see I'm dabbing the brush into each of the slits I just made to make sure that this egg wash is everywhere it needs to be. Next up, we are putting this into a cold oven. I repeat, cold oven, which you will then set to 400 degrees and put it there for 35 minutes. All right, guys, that is it for this week. I will see you next time. See ya. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, throw a like on it, share with your friends, and subscribe for more of our content. You can also find all of our videos and clips on YouTube.com. Just search Let Them Eat Bread, and you'll find all of our content. All right, guys, see you next time. Bye for now.